Everything about this scene supports the notion that white South Africans have it pretty good. This suggests that there is another side to the story. White poverty in South Africa has doubled since the non-racial election in 1994. People like Elsa B. Blignot are stepping in to help. She goes door to door in poor white areas with bags of food. When I first met Sis and her family, they were all sleeping on the floor, they were on the cement. They had no beds, they had no furniture, they had absolutely nothing. Living conditions similar to what you will find in many of the black townships. This tiny house is a home for two families. So all 11 people sleep in this house? Yes. It's very small though. Oh, very, very small. Laura Fenter and her children, her sister's family, her mother, Petronella Casimir, lives here too, and they all survive on her $94 a month pension. Petronella believes there's only one reason why they are in this desperate state. It started, she says, when the black government came to power 15 years ago. In the past, we were, uh, the apartheid years, and the white people uh, put, put them down, and that now it's their time to put us down. It is a common feeling among white South Africans who have fallen on hard times. They are the victims, they say, of affirmative action, or what they call reverse discrimination. Virtually every person in this room feels that way. They all lived and worked during the apartheid era. They are left with meager pensions and come to this community center twice a week for a free meal. They don't talk openly, but ask a few questions and the bitterness rises. I'm sorry, but it's the truth. The black, sorry, it's the truth. It's getting the job. The white people is staying behind. First, the black, and then the white, and that is the truth. It is true that South Africa has its own version of affirmative action. It's called black economic empowerment, and it was seen as vital in the new South Africa. Go to any one of the government ministries in Pretoria today, and most of the civil servants are black. It used to be that most of the faces you'd see on the streets here were white. Under the apartheid system, if you were a white person, you got a job. If you did very badly at school, didn't go to university, were a bit of a layabout, you would find your way into the state apparatus, you'd become a bureaucrat or something like that. Of course, it wasn't just government workers. The entire labor market changed. Years later, blacks and whites are now competing for jobs on equal terms. And whites don't always come out on top. Dirk van der Dradu is a mechanic. I haven't been able to find a job for six months. I used to be on the streets. He's now got a one-room house on a small plot of land. This camp was set up by a nearby community organization, mainly whites. Without it, the people here would be homeless. There are settlements like this all across South Africa, but what makes this one special is that the man who could be this country's next president came here to visit. Jacob Zuma, now the president of the ANC, was said to be shocked at the conditions. And I was very keen as one of those who believe that all South Africans should live in harmony. There should be no South African who must be in poverty, whether white or black or yellow. His visit drew attention to an issue that wasn't comfortably discussed in South African society. In a country where the vast majority of poor people are black, it seemed wrong to talk about a few poor white people. Coverage of the Zuma visit changed that. Yeah, I was shocked because really? I couldn't believe it. Why? Why? Because, you know, in the apartheid, whites used to get everything, and blacks were the ones who were suffering. So it was a shock to see that. And how did you feel when you saw it? How did it make you feel? Uh, I felt uncomfortable because I couldn't believe it. You know, it's okay with blacks because we used to it, but whites, it's unbelievable. Uh, did you feel sorry for them? Yeah, or? I did feel sorry for them. Traveling around, speaking with people in the black community, we were told that when it comes to poverty, color shouldn't matter. When you see a, a, a white child who's five years old, who's homeless, it, it, it evokes in you the, the same feelings that it would evoke 
when you see a black child, because that's what our struggle was around, a response, a moral response to suffering and poverty and injustice. For World Focus, I'm Martin Seemungle in Johannesburg.